Good morning and welcome to our online service today. We are so glad that you are here with us. This morning we are going to have a time of worship and following that we're going to be hearing from God's Word. Pastor Daryl is beginning a brand new series called Blind Spots. This is going to be a great series. Let's look forward to hearing and seeing all that God has to share with us through this new series. For all of our kids who are watching, Pastor Susan has prepared a sermon activity for you today. So please head on to our church website and to our online page and click on the Kids Sermon Activity button down below for your activity. Before we head into worship, let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that we have this awesome privilege to come together to this online service. Lord, we ask of only one thing from you, that God, that you would open the eyes of our heart. Help us to hear what the Spirit of God is saying and help us to see what you are doing in our lives. Open the blind spots that we have covering our hearts, Lord God. Jesus, we pray that as we worship you and as we celebrate you through songs, Lord God, we pray that that, Lord, that you would be exalted and that you would be glorified. Lord, may your blessing be on this online service now. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen and Amen. Let's worship the Lord together.
Good morning and welcome to church today. We are so glad that you can join us. We're happy to announce that we can be back in the building for in-person services. Well, at least at the time of this recording, this is true. We all hope and uh, pray that this remains true. <laughs> so be sure to register first thing every single Monday morning. You'll find the link in your weekly emails, or you can also find it on our website. That is apcalliston.church. Once again, apcalliston.church. Dot church. And don't forget, Zoom prayer meeting is every single Wednesday at 7 p.m. The link to that can also be found in your weekly email. And uh, we're excited to be starting a new community campaign. Last year, if you remember, we were able to purchase over 300 Tim's cards for teachers in our community, and just as a way to really say thank you to them. Well, starting today, we would like to give away over 500 $2 Tim's cards to all the caregivers working in our community's long-term care homes. So let's show our community that we value and appreciate the, uh, the staff and the volunteers who have dedicated themselves to our seniors care during this unprecedented time. If you would like to give to this cause, simply label your donation care cards. Once again, to give to it, just simply label your donations care cards. Let's see how quickly we can reach our goal of $1,000. Now, let's hear from Pastor Darrell. Well, thank you for joining us online today. Today we begin a new series called Blind Spots. This will be a series that will unpack the potential blind spots in our spiritual journey and how we can have victory over the things we cannot see through Jesus Christ who is our strength and our helper. So, so what is a blind spot? We, we will use the analogy of driving a vehicle to, de to determine the definition. A blind spot in a vehicle is an area around the vehicle that cannot be directly observed by the driver while he or she is at the controls under existing circumstances. In other words, there are always areas on the road we will not be able to see. This is why we have mirrors and, and cameras and, and sensors, etc., all built into our cars these days to help us navigate, but it's not foolproof. A blind spot is an obstruction that could become a potential danger when not seen. I remember many years ago wanting to so badly get my driver's license. I, I turned 16 and we were living in Kitchener at the time. So I went to the, to the MTO. Uh, I, I wrote my beginners. And, and of course, back then there was no such thing as a graduated license. And within 30 minutes of me going into the building, I was able to drive the car. It's a little bit scary. One quick phone call to the insurance company and life was grand. I thought I had the world by the tail and also thought that I was an accomplished driver. Imagine 30 minutes writing a written test and I could drive like no man. I have, I have not driven a car up to this point, except for those odd times, you know, backing out the driveway, etc. But But somehow in my mind, figured at the old age of 16 that I was a pro. Now, jumping ahead a few months, 
I was in the car driving my dad's old, I believe it was a 1981 Pontiac Le Mans. He was in the passenger seat with me and, and we were making a left-hand turn on our way home from somewhere. I'm not sure where we were coming from. And as I was making the turn left, I noticed a couple of my high school buddies walking up the street on my left. So in order to, to prove my coolness, you know, you know, I was like, hey, you know, kind of like a Fonzie moment. Uh, if you don't know who Fonzie is, never mind. But in order to prove my coolness, I waved my hand and said, hey, you know, the windows are rolled down. Hey, just a little wave. What I didn't realize was this. As I was making the left-hand turn, only seeing my friends, the car continued turning left into the opposing traffic's lane. I didn't notice because I was too busy being cool. So here's what happened. I did not correct the error in judgment, and I would have had a head-on collision if my father wasn't sitting in the car, in the passenger seat beside me in the car and was on the lookout. I remember him with force and speed grabbing the steering wheel with those strong, rough carpenter's hands and turned us back on course. My moment of fame with my friends ended with humility, embarrassment, but nevertheless safety. I never spoke of this moment with my friends again. <laughs> <laughs> my friends became my focus and everything else became my blind spot. I was not looking where I was going, let alone the already existing blind spots when driving. Now, there are some huge spiritual implications to draw from this little story. Number one is distractions. The enemy finds all kinds of ways to get us to look elsewhere. In fact, he will never stop trying to get us off course. The second spiritual implication is dangers. It could have ended much worse for me and my dad that day. The potential spiritual dangers are things like apostasy and, and living in a backslidden state if we take our eyes off Christ. And the third is my favorite, deliverance. My father saved me that day. Our Heavenly Father, see, has a plan of redemption in place to save us, to provide for us, to free us when we go off course. Galatians 4 verse 4 and 5 tell us this, but when the time has fully come or had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law that we might receive the full rights of sons. God's plan included seeing where we could not and providing forgiveness when we needed it. We all have those moments though, don't we? We all have weaknesses that we do not want to see, I suppose. We all have blind spots. But thankfully, through the power of the Holy Spirit and an incredible relationship with our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ, we can overcome our blind spots and live in victory. Someone say amen to that today. Now let's read our text from 2 Peter chapter 1, verse, verse 3 to 9. Here's what it says. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason make every 
every effort, I like this part, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then verse 9, But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. Now, this is a great text that initially reminds us of the wonderful blessing and favor that God has given us through the power of Jesus Christ. It also reminds us of the responsibility that we have to do our part in this Christian journey. Peter gives this incredible challenge to us so that we would know that we have everything we need for life and for godliness. Truthfully, I I was humbled by this, uh, this, these verses as I read the words. Humbled, convicted. Notice the text says in verse 3, everything. Say that with me. Everything. Jesus, who is the epitome of goodness, exercises his divine power and has given us everything we need to experience forgiveness, the power of the Holy Spirit, and eternal life. Peter talks about life, not referencing life here on this earth or talking about how we live life or talking about how to live longer on this earth. Peter is referencing eternal life here. He is talking about Jesus who gives us that life, a life that never ends. See, our lives without Christ ends in death. It ends in condemnation. It ends with the fullness of corruption. But with Christ, who is Uh, himself life, our lives will never end. It's the abundant life spoken about in John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal, kill, destroy, but Jesus comes to give us abundant life. But Jesus just didn't provide life. He also provided to us godliness. So what is godliness? Is it just following the rules and regulations and and living a life of duty? Is it just saying that we are Christians? Is it just about attending church? See, godliness means to live in reverence and awe of God. To be so conscious of God's presence that, that we would like to live like God himself. It means to be Christ like. Godliness is Christ likeness. 2 Peter 3.11 says this, Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? He says you ought to live holy and godly lives. Everything we know will be gone, so live like God. Living in God's presence will alter or it will change our lives. It will bring visible and at times immediate change. Godliness is to revere God's presence and desire to be in His presence. Oh, that's powerful in itself, isn't it? And so because of those promises of life and godliness, the text tells us that we get to participate. It means action, active. Uh, We get to participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption of the world caused by evil. It sounds absolutely amazing because it is absolutely amazing. The divine nature isn't something that is external for the believer in Christ. No, no, it is internal through the indwelling of the person of the Holy Spirit. God has given us a new nature. He has given us the person of the Holy Spirit to live within us. And if we are believers in Christ, we are participating active, present tense in the divine nature through the person of the Holy Spirit. 
And so because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, we can experience life eternal and godliness. Then Peter changes direction here from what God has given us to what we are to be doing. And he gives us this condition. He gives us this responsibility. And it begins in verse 5. It says, for this very reason, make every effort. Would you say that with me? For this very reason, make every effort. Because of everything God has done for us and because of everything God has given to us and because of everything we get to experience through God, we have a responsibility. This is where our potential blind spot enters the picture. When we make little effort, our spiritual mirrors become tainted, dirty, not accessible. In other words, our blind spots cannot even be seen, let alone dealt with. When we make little effort, we become calloused and hard-hearted to the things of the Lord. Now, just a quick overview of these next few verses that Peter gives us first. A person is to make every effort to add these things to their faith and to their life. Make every effort. That's huge. Second, Peter talks about these qualities and he stresses their importance to keep us on a path toward God. We cannot let up for a moment. These qualities not only must be evident within our lives, but also must be exercised within our lives. Now, a little side note here. What good is it to know the Bible if we never live it out? Applying the Bible to our lives is what is visible. Applying the Bible is where we really begin to learn. This is our living testimony, if you will. This can be a huge blind spot for all of us to deal with. And, and the qualities Peter challenges us here with is emphasized to be lived out with every effort that we have. I remember several years ago fishing for bass on the shores of Lake Huron. A few of us would go to the same spot many evenings for about, about a three-week period or so, I guess, fishing in and out of the bowlers and the shoals uh, on the shoreline. And I remember walking out to this sandbar, quite a ways out actually, uh, taking my time and I was casting along the way, catching the odd fish here and there, when all of a sudden I stepped into this hole in the middle of the lake and I went straight down, the only thing above water, Two things, actually, was my hat floating and my hand holding my fishing rod. Here's a picture for you. I didn't see the hole. Up I came, spitting and gargling and trying to catch my breath. And, and, and there was no harm, no foul done. But I'll tell you, it was not a good experience at all. But this blind spot was overcome the next time I fished there. I remembered it the next evening. I learned from my mistakes. I still couldn't see it, but this time I was prepared for it because I knew it was there. I made an effort to stay away from the danger, but still walked through the water. Even though this spiritual life presents itself with dangers, we can navigate through it by learning from our mistakes and being intentional with our application of knowledge and having an awareness of what is around us. The Bible can provide that teaching for us if and when we apply it to our lives. Then thirdly, Peter gives a very strong warning here in verse 9, which is our key verse for this message today. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. So without Christ in our lives, we are blind. We are short-sighted. We cannot see. 
what we see are all the things that appease the flesh and the old nature, pleasures, possessions, the here and now, uh, etc. Et Without Christ, we are blind to eternity, heaven, God, etc. Peter says this, if we do all of the above, if we live out these godly principles, if we allow God to change our nature, we may still have blind spots, but we will have God on our sides to be looking out for us. And when God is looking out for us, we will not be short-sighted. We will not be blind. We will not be caught off guard. We will not be defeated. We will walk in victory. One of the blind spots in our Christian journey is to not recognize that we constantly need a fresh experience with Christ. It is to forget the meaning of being cleansed of our sins and iniquities. See, it's really difficult to appreciate and fully understand what Jesus has done for us if we forget or choose to no longer see where we have come from. In other words, it's hard to be moved by forgiveness when we are not moved by our once sin-stained state. Forgetting where we came from and, and what we once were and what we had the potential to become can be a blind spot in, in, in growing in our relationship with God. It has the potential to create arrogance and all the things that go with that. 2 Peter 3.18 challenges us with this. It says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to Him be glory both now and forever. So not doing the things Peter outlines for us will be detrimental to our walk. But Peter tells us as if he knows we can do this. And he is correct. We can do this. We got this. Making an effort is about growing in our relationship with God. Growing means we are constantly doing something to go forward. Action, position, the right knowledge, the right people. Add to your faith goodness, goodness, knowledge, knowledge, self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. There's not much room for boredom in this relationship with Jesus, is there? <laughs> Always something to be doing if we are seeing the picture with clarity and proper perspective. The blind spot here is to think we have already arrived. Thinking we have already achieved everything God has for us. Now, I may not look that smart, but I do know that, that looking at this list that Peter gives is quite the tall task. It can be overwhelming to say the least. It, it truly humbles me in the fact that I have lots of work to do in my own life. But the moment I think I have arrived and this, this list no longer applies to me, a selfishness and pride now comes on the scene. When selfishness arrives, I begin to ignore this list that Peter gives here and then I begin to regress in my Christian journey rather than progress. See, when we ignore our blind spots, we create a platform for self-justification. Self-justification will only lead us away from right relationship with God. So, let me challenge you to not ignore the blind spots. But let's deal with them. So there are no longer blind spots to our Christian journey and our walk with God. Let's make every effort to add to our faith and never take away from it. Peter says in verse 11 of this chapter, let me close with this today. For if you do these things, you will never fall. So powerful, isn't it? If we apply the word of God, 
to our lives and consistently and constantly be in right relationship with God, we will be victorious over the things we cannot see. No blind spots. Amen, church. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for this powerful word today. We thank you that even though life is full of potential blind spots and, and dangerous moments and situations, we know that through the person of the Holy Spirit, we can have victory. We can overcome every obstacle. We don't have to live and walk in defeat, but we can live and walk in victory because you are on the lookout for us every moment. And so I pray today, Lord, for all of us that are perhaps struggling with an area of our lives that, that it is a blind spot or perhaps we know of an area in our lives that we're ignoring. I pray, Lord, that we would deal with those blind spots, that, Lord, we would bring them to surface. We would, we would confront them so that, Lord, we're no longer being held captive by them and we can be free and we can walk in victory. And so I pray for all of us today, Lord, to recognize the blind spots, recognize the areas of weakness so that, God, we can, we can have full and complete victory over them. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name today. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you, and thank you for joining us online today.